Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here and Apple's Worldwide Developer Conference or WWDC for short has officially been announced for this year on June 7th to June 11th with the opening keynote taking place on June 7th at 10 p.m. Pacific time or for my fellow East Coasters out there, 1 p.m. Now, there's a lot to talk about going into this event and some really high expectations from the Apple community on what Apple will showcase, not only with their new software for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS, and macOS, but also with some really exciting hardware products on the Mac side due to be out around that time frame. So for this video, I wanted to talk about what we can expect for WWDC 2021 this year and why I'm really, really excited for it, if you couldn't tell. First of all, we should note that this is a virtual conference. Last year was Apple's first attempt at doing a virtual WWDC, and by all metrics, they nailed it out of the park. They were able to hold a high quality keynote presentation and they were able to accommodate even more developers because all of the sessions were virtual and you didn't need to physically be at the event to access these sessions. This year, Apple is even more prepared to host a virtual event after everything they've learned from last year. And this wasn't like a last minute decision to host a virtual event like it was last year. So the presentation of this event as a whole should just be even more impressive. Now, if we look at the actual invite, we can see an Apple Memoji staring at an open laptop, a la Craig Federighi style, with the screen illuminating their face and some app icons reflecting in their glasses with the date of June 7th. Now, I don't know how much we can read into this invite, but people online have already done their fair bit of speculation regarding how these invites look, and the popular conspiracy theory is that the app icons are actually inside of the glasses, and these are Apple's AR glasses. Uh, I personally think people are reading way too much into this invite, and I don't expect to see Apple glasses even mentioned at this event. Actually, I'd be curious to know if you think there are any hints or Easter eggs in this WWDC 2021 invite, so let me know what your theories are in the comments below, but personally, I don't expect to see Apple AR glasses. Okay, okay. You probably don't care about all that stuff anyway. What you want to know is what are we going to see at this Apple event? Well, like every year, I can pretty much guarantee that we are going to see updates to Apple's operating systems for the iPhone in the form of iOS 15, for the iPad with iPad OS 15, the Apple Watch with Watch OS 8, and maybe a few small updates to Apple's TV and tvOS. Well, normally this is the part of the video where I would tell you the types of features we are expecting for all of these new software updates. However, on the leak and rumor side in software features this year, it has been extremely, and I mean extremely quiet, with the beta for these operating systems coming out in just like two months, we really don't have any information. Seriously, there's almost zero leaks for any of these new operating systems. Now, while I could speculate on some of the updates coming to iOS 15, like I think we will see even more updates to widget functionality or more third-party apps being able to be selected as the default app, I really want to focus on what I'm more certain on in this video. And unfortunately, I just don't have accurate information regarding the software side of things. So maybe I'll do a future video and update you if we get some trustworthy leaks and rumors. But for now, let's focus on what we should know is coming the hardware. And this is where things get really exciting because we are actually expecting some pretty major hardware upgrades to be unveiled around the time of WWDC 2021. And it all starts with a brand new redesign coming to the 13 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. The 13 inch is going to be moving up in screen size to 14 inches by getting a bezel reduction around the display. 
The 16 inch is rumored to stay the same size, but could have its overall physical footprint reduced if it also receives some reduction in bezel size. These MacBooks are supposed to adopt a flatter design similar to the new iPhone 12 and iPad Pro, but I think the MacBooks kind of already share that design trait, so it will be interesting to see how these redesigns actually look when they're unveiled. But Mark Gurman from Bloomberg says it will only be a slight redesign, so they should still look pretty similar overall. Of course, the bigger redesign for this MacBook Pro might come in the port selection, with multiple outlets reporting on the return of the MagSafe charger, as well as other port options like HDMI and the return of the SD card slot. There's also been models of this MacBook Pro in testing that don't have the touch bar, and it's widely believed that the next generation of MacBook Pros will ship with a standard function key row and the touch bar will be deleted altogether. Now, I think the biggest thing to look forward to with these new MacBook Pros isn't the design, it's what's on the inside that counts. And Apple will be replacing their higher end version of the MacBook Pro with their own custom Apple Silicon in the form of the M1X or M2 chip. So say goodbye to Intel. So of course these laptops should receive all of the benefits of Apple Silicon, like on the M1 Mac. So lower power consumption, better thermals, longer battery life, and most importantly, super fast performance. The big change for performance on the M1X is going to be coming in two areas. So while I expect single core performance to be the same, we are going to be getting a major jump in multi-core performance with Apple doubling the high performance cores of the M1 chip, moving from a four core high performance core design to an eight high performance core design. This should make the MacBook Pro one of the most powerful Macs out there, realistically only beaten in CPU performance by the highest end options of the Intel Mac Pro. A beefy desktop tower. Another major upgrade to the M1X is actually going to be in the GPU, with Apple rumored to be doubling the GPU cores in this design. This would make it a 16 core GPU design up from eight cores on the M1, and theoretically that would lead to double the GPU performance. Apple is going to need more powerful GPUs than they currently have in their M1 Macs for these higher end laptops, and if Apple can deliver something like this, it should be a nice upgrade, but it might not surpass what we currently have with dedicated AMD cards in products like the 16 inch MacBook Pro. Now the MacBook Pro isn't the only Mac we are expecting at this event. We are also expecting an even bigger update to Apple's iMac, which hasn't been redesigned since 2012. This iMac will receive a substantial update with majorly reduced bezels in the front that would look closer to what you would see in the Pro Display XDR, removal of the iMac chin, flatter sides and back, and it could be coming in a wide array of color options. We are also expecting a jump in the display size because of the reduction of those big iMac bezels. So the 21.5 inch iMac should be moving up all the way to a 24 inch display, while the 27 inch iMac could possibly move to a 32 inch display or keep the same 27 inch display while reducing the overall volume of the computer. So either a more compact 27 inch iMac or a supersized 32 inch design. Personally, I think I wanna see a big 32 inch iMac, the same size as the Pro Display XDR. I think that would be my dream computer. This would be the biggest update to the iMac in quite some time, and it should serve as the iMac design for years to come. Perhaps an even bigger change than just a fresh looking face is the addition of new screen technology going into the iMac in the form of a mini LED display. A mini LED display would lead to greater brightness levels, higher contrast ratios, and the ability to view HDR content. I think the mini LED displays in the iMac will be as big of a jump in overall display quality as when they went from non-Retina iMacs to Retina iMacs. And it's definitely one of the features that I am most excited for. Now this mini LED display is also rumored to be coming to the MacBook Pros we talked about before. 
and vice versa on the M1X chip. That is also going to be coming on this iMac. So everything I mentioned before uh, about lower power consumption, better thermals, eight core CPU, 16 core GPU, yeah, expect all of that M1X performance to also be coming to the iMac as well. As for other Mac products that are rumored like the new half-size Mac Pro and the new Apple external display that's geared towards a more consumer level, I would say to expect the new Mac Pro probably sometime next year. I don't expect to see it at WWDC. But for the external display, this might be a wild card. And if it looks something like this new iMac without the computer parts inside of it, there is a very good possibility we could see Apple show this thing off right alongside their big MacBook Pro upgrade as the external monitor you should buy with these new machines. There's not that many rumors regarding the external display outside of a Bloomberg report, so take that with just a grain of salt. But I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that Apple knows that good external displays for the Mac are quite an issue right now. And I would hope that they would want to show off a new external display with the new MacBook Pro, just like they showed off the ultra fine 5K display with the introduction of the 2016 MacBook Pro. Uh, showing that off now just makes a lot of sense to me. So I could maybe see it coming, maybe. I don't want to get your hopes up too high. As for other rumors like the iPad Pro, AirTags, Apple TV, and AirPods 3, well, I don't expect to see any of those products at WWDC. I would say products like the iPad Pro and AirTags at this point will probably be announced via a press release sometime in April, as it seems increasingly doubtful that Apple would announce an April event after already announcing a future WWDC event uh, so maybe John Prosser is going to have to like shave his hair off or something at this point. So put me on the prediction board, Sam. I'm saying no April event, but seriously, these products seem like press release products. And if all of these products are at WWDC, that would just be a super long show, especially knowing that you have to go through all of these software updates as well. But Hey, if you don't see an iPad pro released in April, I guess expect to see it at WWDC 2021. Uh, but we'll see. But anyway, so far, that's what I expect to see at Apple's WWDC event. Please let me know what you're most excited for in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, be sure to give me a like. If you want future coverage on this event, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm sure we're gonna have a lot to talk about when that happens. And if you wanna help the channel out in any way, make sure you check out some of the links in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.